Let us definitely prepare this time by being with one another in prayer. O oh, gracious and loving God, we pray that the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts, might be acceptable to you, O oh God, who is our rock, our redeemer, and our light. Amen. Amen. Good morning. For half a second there yesterday, I wasn't sure if we all were going to be here today. The snow just kept coming and coming and coming. But we're here, and I hope you all are safe and secure, and your loved ones too. We know there are a lot of folks who chose to take care of their own safety concerns and chose not to be here. That's a very good thing. Sometimes a light isn't something that comes from outside, but is something that's turned on from within. Sometimes light isn't something that illuminates what already is, but sheds light on what might be. Sometimes a light isn't that which calms our fear of the darkness, but a light can upset the status quo and unnerve complacency. How many of us have ever found ourselves in a tight fix? How many of us have ever been in a difficult place? How many of us have ever found ourselves in the midst of an uncomfortable situation? And this is a little more telling. How many of us have found ourselves in a compromising position? Oh, that was too fast. <laughs> us, I suspect, have at one time or another found ourselves in one of these places, in a difficult place. Now, this is a little harder to ask, but how many of us have just gone along with the flow, even though things weren't headed in the direction we wanted, just because of a hundred different factors? We didn't want to upset people. We thought it might be too hard to change direction. We were embarrassed. We didn't know what to do. We, we, we didn't have all the facts. How many of us have just gone along with the flow, even though we knew it wasn't the right direction? My hope is that that's an unfamiliar situation for most of us, but I fear otherwise. I know otherwise for myself. But that's a downer. So let's think a little more positively. How many of us, when things were not right, when things were out of sorts, when things were difficult, had that light turn on inside of us? Whether it was in our head, or our heart, or our souls, or wherever, we had that light that shed something new on the subject at hand, and gave us insight, gave us courage, or just plain gave us the chutzpah to do something different. Which is another way of saying, when did that light turn on for you? and change the course of your history or maybe someone else's. Let's hope all of us at one time or another have experienced that.
just such a moment of revelation and inner illumination. Into Mary's world, and we have got to acknowledge it was a grim and daunting world at best, came news that would turn her life upside down. She, an unwed mother, young, living on the edges of poverty, in a country occupied by power-hungry peoples hell-bent on world domination, she was pregnant. Again, how many of us can relate to that instantaneous moment when our lives were changed by one single piece of news? The test came back positive. There were no survivors. The contract was completely rejected. The bid wasn't accepted. The diploma will not be issued. The test came back negative. The position's already been filled. The letter was returned undeliverable. No forwarding address given. The fire took everything. The phone number has been changed, and at the subscriber's request, the new number is not available. Lives turn topsy-turvy in an instant. Sometimes, the times that seem to hurt the most is the negative news that comes to us. But our worlds can be upended for good news, too, and sometimes it's impossible to tell the difference. The reason you're so sick is because you're pregnant. The new job requires you to move across town, across the state, across the country to another country. Your sister needs you to keep her son for a while. Oh, surely not more than a month or two or a year. Your house will be complete in nine months, no, 16 months, no, maybe two years. I think that one just off the top of my head. Where did I get that one from? You have been accepted into the school you never imagined you would be in. You're a perfect match for the transplant. He said yes! She said yes! Your essay was accepted for the journal. The management position is yours if you want it. In any instance, there is no magic to our response as much as we want it to be and as much as the movies make it out to be. The only thing is everything that you are and all that you were to be is needed in a moment, in a breath, in an instant. One of my favorite singing groups that's uh, now defunct is called The Flirtations. And they have a song that I play whenever I really, really need to feel uh, that I'm ready for that moment. It's called Something Inside So Strong. I love that. And you know, sometimes when that moment comes upon you and you have got your world turned upside down, you have that strength to respond with all that you are and all that you've learned and all that you've grown to be. But you know, I want to tell you this day, there are other times when that moment comes and you are taken into the abyss of the unknown. When you feel as raw and as vulnerable and as unprepared as anything, you are the not yet quite ready for prime time person and you don't know where any courage will come from, much less enough to deal with this life-changing news. Sometimes you just pray that instinct and dumb luck will get you to the right place. I'm not exactly sure what it was for Mary or for Elizabeth, her cousin. Not the first time that's happened. Thank you, Cody. But it seemed that both women had allowed to bring to the 
surface. That which the years of being immersed in their religious traditions and constant prayer often brings. I don't know what to call it except faith. It's not something you can buy off of the shelf. It's not something that you can work for at the office or the gym or the yoga studio. Just faith. Nurtured day in and day out, breath in and breath out over a lifetime. Sometimes it's at the synagogue or the church. Sometimes it's at home. Sometimes it's on your knees with your parents or your grandparents or the next door neighbor. Sometimes that faith is developed on the long walks at the beach or the park or the city streets. Sometimes it's in the library with books from way back when or just yesterday. But more often than not, that faith that helps you be ready for that moment, life-changing news, is the faith that comes in a quiet place in your Certainly what we learn from about Mary is that wherever we might find that faith to respond to life's incredible moments of upheaval and change, we cannot tie our response to keeping the status quo, keeping things exactly the way they were before we heard the news. We know that does not work and Mary reminds us so. In fact, it is when we respond thinking that after all is said and done, that things will pretty much look the same, that life will go on as before, and nobody will notice anything different in us or in the world. It's then when we really mess things up. We have to manipulate things to try and get them to look like nothing changed, and, and life is just like it was the way before. If we pretend that responding faithfully to life's incredible challenges was result of in life as is, that we risk distorting the outcome in ways that are not only unhealthy but dangerous. Instead, we need to recognize that change will come. And let us flow with it. That's what Mary did. See, Mary was crystal clear in her response that we heard read today that she didn't just accept this life-changing news, this life-altering news of the impending birth of a child and a very, very special child of this. She knew that the world was going to change and change significantly, and she was willing to name what that change was going to be. I think she helped to shape that change by her response. The light that turned on inside of her soul shone beyond her being to illuminate the fact that the world around her was out of kilter. It needed to be changed. Many of the citizens, particularly the people that she knew and loved, needed the world to turn upside down because the right way it was or the way it was then was not working for them. Many of the citizens of the world at that time, and I fear of our time, find the inequities and injustices insufferable. Poor and marginalized people like Mary around the world knew that the status quo was completely unacceptable and actually probably relished their lives being turned inside out, upside down, topsy-turvy. Her response in what we now call the Magnificat helped make it clear that the world as is, for Mary at least, was unacceptable. And she saw God working in her life-changing news to turn the world upside down and make it right for perhaps the first time. That's why she's saying God's mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. God has shown strength with God's arm, has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their heart, or in the imaginations of their heart, as the old language would say. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. In the same way, Elizabeth knew that this baby that she would bear as an old woman 
would be a baby who would challenge the sins of a corrupt world and face the consequences, the fatal consequences of just such revolutionary behavior. This is not the first time, though, that such news changed the world. Hannah had sang a similar song when she was informed of her pregnancy and the impending birth of Samuel. Isaiah, who spoke to a people's upended by exile, occupation, and the destruction of all that was sacred to them, was able to sing, See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. And this is so important. After all that wording about change, Isaiah sings, Sing to the Lord a new song, God's praise from the end of the earth. My beloved, things happen. And that's putting it nicely. Things happen. Horrible things, wonderful things, and everything in between. You know me well enough to know that is not God's doing. It is the way of creation. We have very little control over much of what happens that turns our worlds upside down. But what we do have some control over, and God allows us to be in partnership, is how we respond to the upending changes of our lives. What we do have a little more control over, if we've allowed our lives to be steeped in such a way as to understand the changes that are thrust upon us are opportunities for transformation for ourselves and for the world. That the good news that comes to us in Jesus Christ was not meant for those plain, everyday, boring days as much as they were meant for the days when life is completely upside down and the news caught us by surprise. Does this mean that things will stay the same if we work hard enough at, at it? That complacency can be coddled and the status quo maintained? Not on your life, thanks be to God. But what this does mean is that we can come... Let me start that again. But what it does mean is that what comes can give us joy. Joy like we expected? Probably not. But joy nonetheless. Mary's joy, Elizabeth's joy, Isaiah's joy, and our joy is not that the light that is turned on inside of us shows us pretty sweet and comforting scenes like they were in a snow globe. But instead, that light that beams from within us shows us the way things can be. A world of justice, a world of equality, a world of right relationship, dignity, and respect. A world of joy, a world of faith, a world of love. Let us look for the light that comes from within us. It is not our light, we know that. It is the light that flows through us. But let us look for the light that comes from within and seek out that joy that is possible no matter what the circumstances are. And when the world is turned inside out, upside down, and round and round, let us sing with the angels, praise be to God, for God is at work. Amen. So as we conclude our service, I invite all of us to stand as we are able and sing our faith in our final song. And if you would like to have your life upended in a community that tries to acknowledge that light, if you want to follow the light of Jesus Christ, come forward as we all sing together. Our heavenly reputation is number 143, Joy to the World. I'd invite you all to stand as we join together in our final hymn, 143.